we'll work, way, uh, work our way through each candidate down the line and uh, we'll start off with Councillor Hakim of Team Hakim. Thank you, thanks Leo, and good evening everyone. Uh, how wonderful is it to be here uh, on Wurundjeri, Wai Wurrung land? I also want to acknowledge country. Now, housing is at the heart of Melbourne's future, and it's essential that we address this with innovative and practical solutions. As Lord Mayor, I'm committed to ensuring that Melbourne is not only livable, but also affordable for all. Our city must evolve with a clear vision of inclusivity and resilience. We need to provide more affordable housing options while also preserving the identity that makes Melbourne unique. And that means working with the City of Melbourne's control to remove bottlenecks in the development process, streamlining quality planning approvals, and ensuring excellent design, especially for family-friendly apartments. Now, I stand by the belief that a home is a right, not a luxury. And in fact, we heard from Rob earlier that affordable housing is an economic importance. And my Postcode 3000 commitment focuses on reviewing our urban environment to identify the most effective ways to house more people within our city affordably. By focusing on creative solutions, such as building well-designed housing on council old land and advocating for social and public housing from state and federal governments, we can make meaningful change. So let's pro prioritize affordable housing that works for everyone, from families to individuals. Thank you, everybody. Continuing, uh, we'll go to Roxanne Ingleton from the Greens. Thank you, and I would also like to acknowledge uh, we meet on the land of the Wurundjeri people. Um, I announced my candidacy for Lord Mayor with a pledge to make this campaign about housing supply and affordability. The first policy the Greens launched was titled Abundant Affordable Homes because we are in a housing and cost of living crisis. And so at every opportunity I have, I talk about what council can do to work with other levels of government to make Melbourne a truly welcoming place for everyone, including those priced out of living here. So let's talk about housing and let's talk about supply because we need more of it. The Greens think we can meet and beat the state government's draft housing capacity targets. We think the remnants of the neighbourhood residential zone inside City of Melbourne have had their day, and Council should lead by example, scrapping the NRZ so other metropolitan councils are encouraged to upzone as well. We think our urban renewal areas like Arden, Egate and Dynan yet to be sold to private developers. Uh, we want the yield to be generous so that government can demand public benefits like affordable housing, confident that the building finance will stack up. We say that the affordable housing rate in those areas should be 30%, well below London's 50%, but in line with what developers can handle on newly sold sites. We're gonna to have to try a lot of things and council will need to cooperate on multi-level government reform. If we don't, Melbourne simply won't be a place where you can afford to live where you work. We risk entrenching an economy where essential workers commute for hours each day to and from the CBD while preserving the inner ring of suburbs for the very rich. It's a recipe for taking the life and the creative soul out of inner Melbourne. And frankly, I'm not interested in being Lord Mayor of that city. I'm a midwife, I'm not a CEO. I rent my home in North Melbourne and I'd quite like to stay there. But more importantly, I want that opportunity to be extended to the generations of Melburnians who follow us. And that's why I'm running for Lord Mayor. Uh, we'll keep moving on, thank you very much. Uh, we'll go to, from Voices uh, for Melbourne, Greg Bizzanella. Thanks, Leo. Any NIMBYs in here tonight? Thanks also to you for uh, putting on this event this evening. I can see from the people that are here that this is a very important issue to be discussed. So good evening to all of you. I did say a good evening to all of you. No response. Thank you. When I was a school teacher many years ago, I used to walk into the classroom, look to the class and say, good afternoon class, and they'd come back and say, good afternoon, Mr. Bizanella. 
but I guess times have changed, so just please call me Greg. I am the mayoral candidate for the Voices for Melbourne team. We are what we'd call a gentle group, GNTL, genuinely independent, non-politically party aligned, a team of resident and small business owners who live, work, study and play in the neighbourhoods in the city of Melbourne. And if we put a bit of a framework around this discussion tonight, the city of Melbourne is currently 170,000 people who live in the CBD and the neighbourhoods, and that number is expected to double over the next 20 years. That is an increase of 8,000 a year for the next 20 years. Now, our challenge is how do we accommodate that growth? Anyone here live in Carlton, Parkville, North Melbourne, West Melbourne, Docklands, South Bank, East Melbourne, South Yarra, and the CBD? Because all these areas make up the city of Melbourne. And at the same time, the broader Melbourne uh, population is expected to double to 8 million people. And these people need somewhere to live. No, actually, they need a home, a sustainable and vibrant community, not a poorly built box of four walls and a bed. It is a community and all the elements that make up a well-functioning community, like shops and healthcare and art centres and sporting facilities and some green open spaces. So I'm looking forward tonight to sharing some of our ideas with you and also hearing some of your suggestions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll keep moving down uh, from Team Wood, Aaron Wood. Thanks very much to everyone for being here tonight. Team Wood is also a proudly independent team made up of independent leadership uh, and I've been a small business owner and a resident of Kensington for nearly 20 years. Uh, I think it's really important that we have the private sector working hand in glove with uh, all levels of government to focus on an issue which is not just about housing but is actually a, a really impacting business as well. When we talk about key worker housing, uh, you know, if we ha can't have those key workers living uh, where they work, that actually impacts on business. So it's not just a, a housing issue as well. The thing is too that we've done this before. When I was on council for eight years as the deputy mayor and acting mayor, uh, we established the Munro development where over 50 affordable housing apartments was delivered and six additional apartments handed to the TAC for those with special needs. So it can be done, particularly on council property. But we need to fast track more private housing, including more affordable and key worker housing. And the way that you do that is to support the establishment of an affordable housing register. We think 30 years to be on that register is about the right um, timeline. We support a density uplift for affordable housing. Uh, and much is made of density, but medium density can achieve a lot in a city like Melbourne. But this needs to stack up from the private sector perspective. And what we're seeing at the moment is even with that uplift, we're not seeing projects get out of the ground when we need them most. So the city of Melbourne needs to work with the state government and the federal government to look at how they can forego revenue for this critical issue. And that's rates, GST and land tax. Team Wood also supports increasing the threshold for removing stamp duty for newly built apartments from 600,000 to 800,000 so we can get this stock into the market at a time when we need it most as well. The other area is to reduce um, the bureaucratic time delays through planning reforms because we know that holding costs are real costs for developers in getting these projects out of the ground. And finally, an audit of all Melbourne properties and a target of affordable housing to lead by example on any City of Melbourne developments. We think housing is absolutely a right. It's also a huge impact to business in our city and we need to get this right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We'll keep moving down and from Team Nick Reese, Lord Mayor Nick Reese.
Well, hello everybody. My name is Nick Rees, Lord Mayor of Melbourne, and thank you all for turning out to this important debate this evening. Uh, can I thank uh, Rob and Leo for facilitating, uh, and uh, can I also begin by acknowledging that we are meeting on the unceded lands of the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people. Well, thank you all for turning up. I think that housing affordability is the most pressing debate in Australia right now. How a nation like ours with all the resources, the abundance of land, and the, uh, as being as prosperous as we are, can have a housing affordability crisis is beyond comprehension. Housing is a basic human right, and as a nation, we should be able to ensure that every Australian has access to it. This is an area that I'm particularly passionate about. I have chaired the planning portfolio at the City of Melbourne. You want to know how to lose friends and annoy people? Try looking after planning in the inner city of Melbourne. This is a difficult area. If there were easy solutions, we would have already found them. But tonight, I hope we can press ahead with some ideas that can find uh, widespread support. Secondly, I should say I have had the experience of, um, of a housing crisis in my own family. So I know how easy it is for someone to go from a home to homeless. And then I've also been involved in the big issue for more than two decades in Melbourne, uh, a fabulous uh, service helping people, some of the most vulnerable in our community, find a pathway back. But tonight we need to move beyond just platitudes. We need to talk about some of the concrete actions that we can take. I truly believe that Melbourne can be bigger and better but we need to get the policy settings right. You need to have a town hall that knows what it's doing and we need leadership. So let me just put uh, four ideas out there, four points that I think could help deliver the 134,000 new homes that the City of Melbourne is signed up to under the state government target by 2051. The first is council needs to identify land for new housing. Now this can begin with council's own land where identify surplus land, offer that up for long-term affordable housing. We are seeing that happen around the city at the moment. The Munro site has been mentioned. Also there's a site on Victoria Parade in North Melbourne which is also out to market at the moment for just that end. The second is looking at those vast tracts of developable land close to the city which can house quality affordable homes for a new generation of Melbournians. So Arden, Macaulay, Fisherman's Bend, West Melbourne, the city, these are all areas which are ripe for new development and can set this city up for the future. Secondly, we need to look at how we can leverage the planning system to deliver more and improved affordable housing outcomes. At the City of Melbourne, we are proudly a YIMBY council, and I know councillors who are here tonight would agree with me on that. There are already in the pipeline 100 projects with 16,000 dwellings which have been approved by council that are ready to go. We genuinely do lean in in approving new housing in our municipality. We also need to look at how we can convert office towers those empty office towers into new residential development. One of the policies I'm putting forward in this election is looking at the 80 towers around the city which are identified as prime buildings for, for new residential development. We've done this in the past and we believe we can deliver 4,000 new homes over the next term during uh, using that policy. Thirdly, we need to advocate for systemic change. You know, we've got a federal tax system which has turned houses, a basic human right, into an investment class and priced too many ordinary people out of the market. Secondly, we need changes at a state tax system as well. You know, there used to be tax breaks like off-the-plan stamp duty exemption, which provide an incentive for people to buy into new homes, increasing supply and making the pathway to new homes uh, easier for people. That's a change that we should strongly advocate for. Finally, I think any council in this city should strongly support the most vulnerable, the rough sleepers, recognising there's a continuum in housing that runs from rough, rough sleeping all the way through to home ownership. One of the things this council has done in this term is the Make Room project, delivering 50 studio apartments for rough sleepers in our city. Uh, uh, Lord Mayor Sally Cap, Council Olivia Bull and others have really got behind that. It's been a transformational project which will help the most vulnerable in our community. And I do think that it's just something that we should be looking at for the next term. So there's four big ideas, bold ideas that can actually be delivered. I'm hoping we can unpack them tonight in the debate. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Thank you.
Thank you very much. We'll keep moving on now from Labor for Melbourne, Philip Reid. Thanks, Leo. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Can I start uh, by also acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting here tonight and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Uh, Labor for Melbourne is campaigning in these elections under the theme of keeping local government local. And the dis critical decision that led us to uh, campaigning and putting forward that theme was the very issue that's on the table here tonight, housing. Uh, the facts are, and we've heard it referenced in various statistics tonight, so I'll give you another one. Uh, in the next 20 years, the City of Melbourne is set to become the second fastest growing municipality in Victoria, with one in 20 new homes being built right here in the City of Melbourne. Now, while the growth in housing and the growth in employment that comes with it is to be welcomed, it also means we need a council that's doing more than being a passenger in the debate around housing. It needs to be driving the discussion to make sure that we're providing housing options that meet a diverse population base. Options for renters and buyers. Options for downsizers and upsizers. Uh, options for individuals of all shapes and uh, individuals and families of all shapes and sizes. Uh, as a former TAC road safety executive, I was delighted to hear the reference earlier to uh, providing housing options for people with uh, mobility impairment. And of course, right at the heart of it, and again, it's also been referenced earlier, uh, the key workers, those workers who make our city tick, often in unseen jobs, but we sure notice when those jobs aren't being done. But let's put the level of growth that we're going to experience in perspective. In the next four years, Melbourne's going to uh, increase in size by the, a population base of about the size of a Victorian regional town, somewhere between a town the size of Warrnambool and Horsham. Labor for Melbourne recognise that that level of growth requires a focus not just on the houses, but the services and facilities that we usually associate with municipalities on Melbourne's urban fringe. Childcare, parks and playgrounds, maternal and child health at one end of the spectrum, age services uh, and uh, housing opportunities at the other end of the spectrum, and plenty in between. In short, we need to make sure we're building communities not just home, uh, not just homes. By our calculations and what we'll commit to doing is by the time the elections roll around in 2028, we'll have five new kinders, two more libraries and two more large scale sport and recreational facilities underway to meet that population need. It's absolutely consistent with the population growth we'll see. More importantly, it's council's job. We should be an exemplar in how local government rises to the challenge of housing. And with Labor, the Labor for Melbourne team and my leadership of it, I'm confident we can be. I look forward to answering your questions in the later part of the debate about precisely how we'll do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna continue here the deputy candidate from Liberals for Melbourne, Luke Martin. Thank you for having me. I am here on behalf of our fantastic Lord Mayor candidate, Mariam Reza, who cannot be with us here today. But the Liberal Party is here today, ladies and gentlemen, because we want a campaign in Melbourne for the first time ever because we are the party of business. We are the parties of families, no matter their composition, and we are the parties that support and encourage strong and vibrant communities. The word crisis gets thrown around a lot but I can certainly relate to being a little bit older than my friend here, trying to run around and find a rental apartment when I was struggling at university. That was hard. Things have got incredibly tougher for people looking to rent and also for people looking to buy. The Liberal Party is the party that will always support home ownership. Home ownership, in addition to having a job, is one of the great things that economic growth, economic development can deliver. Not only does that make a person feel the ability to go out and earn and spend and raise their family, but it also gives them purpose. As a very wise Australian once said in relation to homes, it's not just a house, it's indeed a home. And the Liberal Party will certainly look to do more and certainly look to do all it can to get as many Australians as possible 
into their own homes. It's not easy. As someone said before, if it was easy, it all would have been done before. And when we do have a situation where the city is growing because people want to live here, because it is a fantastic place to live, as all the Liberal candidates know, all four of us are locals, we live in different parts of the city, but we love it. We do want to make sure that when we do get more housing supply into the city, that we do respect our heritage and we do respect the built environment that is already here. There has to be a balanced approach and under a Liberal Party policy, we will always have a balanced approach to making sure you get housing supply, but not at the expense of our beautiful heritage and not at the expense of the quality of life that people that choose to live, work and invest in this great city. Investment in housing is necessary. There is a supply problem. And I was very pleased to hear our opening remarks that this is an economic problem. There is issues around supply and we need to make sure that there is more affordable supply through all areas of housing in Melbourne. Whilst we need to encourage as much sensible investment as possible, the Liberal Party will never sell Melbourne's heritage to pay for our agenda and will never give foreign investors a leg up over Melbournians trying to make their way and get their own home in the middle of a housing crisis. Thank you for listening and look forward to your questions. Thank you very much. One more candidate uh, to go, and I'll get out of his seat as well, uh, from Team Cooter, Anthony Cooterfides. Thanks, everyone, and uh, well done to all the candidates who have spoken uh, before. And to Leo, terrific, mate, the future of Australia, 16, to do what you did. It's fantastic, mate. Keep up the good work. It's exactly what we need, and we understand the importance of the housing crisis. I have uh, kids myself, and I just think how lucky I was when I grew up when I did, and uh, compared to how difficult it will be for them if we don't do something about it. So for us at Team Cooter, uh, we have uh, spoken to uh, a lot of property experts just to see and get their advice of what we need in Melbourne. And as Nick said previously, there's around about 80 vacant uh, or semi-vacant office buildings that we believe can be converted into, um, into uh, affordable housing, and that's really important. So we think even if we only do half of them or a quarter of them, we can get around 10,000 dwellings to help that. We think it's a wonderful number to ease the pain for a lot of people. And these type of accommodations can be best suitable for lower paid workers, uh, such as uh, cleaners, hospitality staff, healthcare workers, and just think if they're able to live in the city, then they don't have to worry about transport, car parking issues and things like that. That has been quite an issue for a lot of the people previous. We also think in terms of builders, uh, it must be feasible for them to be able to build, so there has to be incentives for them to be able to build, and so, you know, things like uh, uh, rate, rate holds for multiple years and other assistance where they can go, and we need Victorian Government also to help, but whatever we can do as the City of Melbourne to give them an incentive to be able to build. And I also think of the property uh, owners that currently, if their properties are vacant, what the price of those properties are compared to what they would be if they were... Uh, there with affordable housing in there and people were actually living in the offices so it helps both extremes and uh, so also a further incentive for carbon footprint so we, we love the fact that the incentives of using solar power, uh, rooftop gardens, vertical gardens and things like this we can give an, more of an incentive for these uh, builders to be able to them to, uh, to build. So thank you very much for your time and uh, looking forward to the uh, questions. Thank <laughs> you.